Yeah, now okay. we are here with the one and only Mr. Jonas Otango and it's so amazing because in the last three episode movies, Fourth Awakens uh, in Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker and in Solo, you played um, Chewbacca whenever he's walking, standing, fighting and so on. So what kind of honor was it for you when you first got maybe the opportunity that probably J.J. Abrams called you and says, yes, you are in? It was uh, phenomenal because I've always dreamed about doing something related to acting, but, but I knew I was tall, so the roles were going to be very limited. And when the call came that they were looking for someone my size, I immediately jumped on it and, and uh, to step into the suit for the first time was uh, amazing because the, the crew and the cast hadn't seen uh, the character for 40 years. And uh, when to, set, uh, to take a step, uh, step on set for the first time uh, together with Harrison Ford uh, was amazing uh, feeling for everybody involved. And you played with Harrison Ford in the, in the, in the, in the uh, Force Awakens because uh, I know him from several interviews. And you know, he's a little bit grumpy, so I don't know. So what was your... Um, That's just your, an act. <laughs> yeah, Harrison was, uh, he was a joy to work with. He's, he enjoyed uh, straight talking humor and uh, and we had we had a lot of that going on you know he I, I once asked like what, what's my, my character's motivation to look behind me and he said you don't know it's the money <laughs> and uh, after that I knew <laughs> Great. Um, when you enter the set for the first time so can you maybe um, uh, describe your feelings for me so was it like getting warm getting cold uh, Easter on mm, Thursday and Christmas on what day or it was it was like I've I'd won the lottery and entered heaven and ev all those things like mushed into one because uh, it was I'd seen that chess table hollow chess table in my childhood and I'd known it for all my life and then to be on a set that has that and to be involved in creating the extension of that story was just uh, phenomenal and I was a fanboy uh, all throughout those four films that we shot and uh, and it's been it's been remarkable to um, to uh, bring that to the uh, audience and the new generations and not and to have the response be so grateful and I'm just very glad that it's uh, people have received it well Looking at the title, did you maybe have some uh, Star Wars action figures as well? Because I have collected them all in the, in, in the 80s and I also have some kind of, of Chewie collectibles. So it would be maybe some kind of crazy when you are just collecting these figures as a kid and now you are playing the world. It's, uh, yeah, we, we did have some, some of the Star Wars toys. and um, But yeah, most of them were not available in Finland, where I'm, where I'm from. So, so um, But it, it's, I was always a fan and uh, I would... I would not have been able to guess where this path takes me. And um, when you are um, thinking on the uh, shooting of the, of the, of the, of the movie, so um, did you remember maybe some funny stuff, some crazy stuff, maybe some things go wrong, the trip not go wrong, some cutouts and bloopers and so on? <laughs> well, the first time I, I did step into the uh, to ship uh, and the cockpit, we, had, we were shooting some um, related thing to JJ's uh, relative and we were shooting this funny skit where he turns to me and uh, I say a few <laughs> Chewbacca lines but then I, I go on to pull on this lever which was I don't know the brakes or something in the uh, in the uh, Millennium Falcon and it comes off so I my first scene in the Millennium Falcon I break the Millennium Falcon so that was a, a funny uh, <laughs> occurrence yeah, because Chewie's just one guy Exactly. Uh, yeah, but Chewie fixes fixed it immediately, so no harm done. Okay, and um, when you are um, sitting in that cockpit, so um, how was it? Because it's not only a cockpit, it's not only a set; it's a the Millennium Falcon. Yes, yes, exactly. And to to be in the Millennium Falcon and uh, n noticing the quirks that they had and the and the. Uh, uh, parts that they got from the hardware store and uh, like feeling those uh, the the ingenuity on a lower budget that they used because they made uh, the Star Wars in the 70s with you know on a <laughs> you know on a very limited uh, schedule and budget and it was just an, an amazing uh, you know George Lucas vision uh, was there and uh, I was I was really happy to step on that ship and work in there because it was there's no other uh, place where you get that immersion into star the world of Star Wars. And during um, 
the shooting of, of, of the movie, I hope, because I'm, I'm such a fan of things my use, I'm also a prop collector, so are you probably allowed to take some things of the set? Maybe you get some props or some any stuff uh, that, that, that they didn't uh, need at the end of the shooting? Right, well, name me a thing that we couldn't need because we, <laughs> we recycled uh, many things into the newer movies that something that didn't make it to The Force Awakens, they used in another film. And so there wasn't any, I, I knew I would be taking my, some of my tools if I took anything home. So um, I'm, I'm waiting for the call to uh, step back into the suit. Okay, but you didn't get maybe some kind of bowcaster replica or, or anything else or some kind of stunt? No, no I, it, you know, even if I did, I wouldn't tell because uh, those all, everything is needed back when the day comes that we'll, we'll continue these stories. Okay, I personally enjoy Solo, but it didn't went out so well. But I think this was just an issue of the um, promotion plan because um, I think this was not this was not very lucky. But I think there is maybe um, an audience for a solo two and a for a solo three movie. So what did you think? Mm. What did you know? Is there maybe some some chance that we see you again in solo two? We'll have to wait and see. But definitely, everyone who's seen Solo knows that it's a fun adventure film and uh, and just it's just a joy to watch. So. So we'll, we'll see what, what will happen. And I certainly enjoyed making that movie, so. Okay, and my last question, um, if you could be Chewbacca, maybe for one day in real life, for example, in Hollywood, so what would you do with all your power and so on? <laughs> I don't know, I probably took Uh, would take people on a, on a cruise uh, to Kashyyyk to learn the Kashyyyk ways of living. Uh, that would probably... <laughs> also, I'd fix some, some um, um, you know, if there was ever a, a ship that needed fixing, uh, Chewbacca would be the man for the job, or the Wookiee for the job. Great. And uh, at last, maybe not some, some kind of words from you? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Great. Cool.